if you don't go any further in this video, I want to be very clear. Catholics do not believe that we are saved by our works. What do we believe in? We believe, <coughs> excuse me. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. There is this kind of, I don't know, old argument or old debate that goes back to the 1500s when it came to those who broke away from the Catholic Church and started their own denominations uh, about is it faith or is it works? In fact, one of the kind of cries was a uh, sola fide or faith alone. And so sometimes people say, like, okay, so Protestants believe in faith alone. We're saved by faith alone, justified by faith alone. Whereas Catholics believe that you're saved by your works, right? So this this kind of thing, is it faith or is it works? And on one hand, our Protestants saying it's faith. On the other hand, it's Catholics saying it's works. Now, that's probably a, what's the word? That is probably a mis, mischaracterization of both parties. In fact, I know it's a mischaracterization, mix, mixed, <laughs> I know it's a mischaracterization of the Catholic party because we don't believe that we're saved by our works. What do we believe in? We believe that we are saved by grace through faith, working itself out in love. And there are a lot of Protestants who would say like, no, no, you have to, there's some kind of thing you have to do. So, but there's some though who would say, no, 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 sola fide. All you have to do is profess faith in Jesus. That's all you have to do is have faith in Jesus. In fact, scripture says, if you believe in your heart, profess through the lips, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. Now, at the same time, we can't isolate a scripture passage and take it out and read it at the exclusion of all the other scriptural passages. So how do I understand a Catholic vision of salvation? Well, what we need is both faith and works. Let's go back to the original definition. We're saved by grace, right? It's just a free gift. Saved by grace. It's God's free gift. It's unmerited. It's, it's, it is bestowed upon us before we have done anything to deserve it. And in spite of the fact that we haven't done anything to deserve it, it is God's gift. We're saved by grace through faith, right? We respond to God's gift of grace. We respond to God's gift of himself in, in the passion, Paschal mystery, right? Christ's life, death, and resurrection. We respond to that with faith. In another video, we'll talk about this more. But faith isn't just like, oh, yeah, yeah, check the box. Like, I agree. <laughs> That's not faith. That's the beginning of belief. But faith is, I have placed my trust. I have surrendered my intellect and my will to this God who has died and risen from the dead for me and poured out the Holy Spirit for me. We're saved by grace. Again, completely unmerited gift through faith. That's, I've now surrendered. I've submitted my intellect and my will to this God working itself out in love. So there, there, there is that sense of it has to work itself out. It's not, a, it's not a one and done. It's not once saved, always saved. It's not once I profess faith in Jesus and I can just go about my merry way. Why do we know that this is true? Well, we know this is true because of scripture. In one place you can say, well, if you profess with your lips and believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. Yes, but we can't read that to the exclusion of other scriptures. For example, we have another scripture where Jesus makes it very clear. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone who, again, surrenders their intellect and will to me will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. So we realize that connected to faith is also action. That connected to faith is also works. In fact, in the letter of James, James makes it very clear. He says, faith without works is dead. The faith without works is dead. Another way to say it is, faith without works is no use. Faith without works is like having no faith. That you actually have to, we have to, again, we're saved by grace, through faith, working itself out in love. In fact, that phrase, sola fide, faith alone, that's only found one place in the entire Bible. And that is in James chapter 5, when James says, we are not saved through faith alone. The only time that rallying cry of faith alone is, is there, those two words are together in scripture, is when St. James writes, we are not saved by faith alone. But what do we say by? We say by grace through faith, working itself out in love. And we see this, we, again, we see this, even Jesus has made this so clear. At the end of um, Matthew's gospel, right? Matthew chapter 25, he has a number of kind of apocalyptic end of time visions or parables that he tells. And he says that at the end of time, here is the Lord, when the Son of Man comes, he'll divide them like sheep and goats, right? To the sheep, they'll go to everlasting rest with my father and to the goats to damnation. What is the differentiation between the sheep and the goats? Well, to those who are saved, to those who go to heaven, essentially, Jesus says what? He says, I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was ill and in prison, you visited me. And they say, well, when did you do that? When did we see you naked and, and hungry and alone? And he says, as often as you did it for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me. And to the others, he says, 
I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was ill in prison, you didn't visit me. And they will say to them, to Jesus, um, when do we see you? And he says, a lot, as often as you didn't do it for one of these least of my brethren, you did not do it for me. And you realize, they both call him Lord, right? Those going to heaven and those going to hell both call him Lord. Now, it could be at the end of time when Jesus reveals himself as Lord to everybody, even those who didn't believe in him. That's a distinction. Maybe that's a, that case. But the differentiation between heaven and hell is not based off of, did you believe in me? The differentiation between heaven and hell is not, did you have faith in me? The differentiation between heaven and hell is, did you take care of the least of these or did you not take care of the least of these? Did you do something or did you not do something? Now, this is so critical. Salvation is a gift of grace. None of us deserve it. None of us work our way to heaven. None of us can work our way to heaven. It is a free gift. Remember, we're saved by grace through faith, working itself out in love. At the same time, Faith without works is dead, utterly useless. It can save no one. Having works is not merely a sign that I've been saved. Having works comes out of this live relationship with God where I've actually surrendered myself to him. No, it's completely his gift, but I have to do something with his gift or it is as if I never got a gift. Now, here's an example. I, I Maybe I've used this example before, but I'm going to use it again. So imagine... Uh, Christmas comes around. Maybe actually, no, not even Christmas, not even your birthday. Your parents, out of nowhere, out of just the sheer goodness of their hearts, they decide to buy you a guitar. Again, it's not, you, nothing you earned, nothing you deserve, not even, again, not even your birthday, not even Christmas. Out of nowhere, your parents are just like, I love you so much. I'm, we're going to give you this guitar. And this is not just an ordinary guitar. This is an extraordinary guitar. It, it's, it's incredible. It's one of the best guitars ever made, right? Not only are we, we going to give you this guitar, we are giving you right down the road is uh, one of the greatest guitar teachers of all time. You have unlimited lessons with this person. As often as you want to train with them, as often as you want to study with them, we've already taken care of it, completely provided. Anytime you want, you just walk down with your guitar and this person, this, this incredible guitar teacher will teach you guitar. If also, also this, if you ever break a string, if you ever wreck the guitar, if you are walking down to the teacher's place and like smash it against a tree accidentally, or even on purpose, we will completely fix that guitar. We'll replace that guitar. Now, if I've been given all those things, I didn't merit it, I didn't deserve it, but I've been given those things by these parents who love me, but I never pick up the guitar and play it. If I never go down the road and actually learn from this great guitar master, if I never, if I break a string, but then never ask for it to be fixed, I've been given the gift, but is the gift of any use to me? No. Now, did you do anything to deserve it? If I work really, really hard at the guitar, can I be a great guitar player? You can't without a guitar. <laughs> so the gift itself, the guitar, the lessons, the repairs, the replacement, unmerited, free gift. I could never work hard enough to get this. So it's not saved by works. It's not I'm a great guitar player because of works. But unless I actually work, it's as if they never gave me the gift. And let's say it like this. Unless I cooperate with the action of the Holy Spirit, unless I cooperate and actually let my choices be affected by the grace that was given to me, it will be as if no gift has been given in the first place. See the analogy? Hopefully the analogy doesn't break down at any point because here's God who in his complete goodness, who loves you so much, has given us the gift of salvation. And it is wrapped up in a bow. It can trans change our hearts. Here's God who says that I will constantly give you my spirit who will lead you into all truth. You're part of the church. And if you're ever hungry, you come to the church, you get fed. If you're ever hurt, you come to the church and get healed. But if I never unpack that gift of grace, again, unmerited, purely gratuitous gift of God's grace, I never respond with faith, submitting my intellect and my will to God, and I never work out in love, it will be as if I was never given that gift in the first place. God has made his decision. Before you or I did anything, and before I actually even scripture says, Romans chapter 5, while you and I were still enemies of God, he did this. How much more so? Now, once we've been reconciled, will he pour out his abundance of his grace upon us, his Holy Spirit into our hearts? You already started with an A. Here's the deal. God loves you so much, you already start out with an A. Now we just say, okay, unpack the gift. Just pick up the gift. Now, here's the last thing. 
I know how intimidating it can be. I know what it is to have a guitar and be like, where do I start? I see amazing people out there and they're playing guitar like crazy. They're incredible at this. I don't even know where to start. Or I'm trying and it's really hard to get my fingers in the right place and all these kind of things, right? You know, you just start. Because I also know what it is to be intimidated by this invitation of, oh my gosh, here's God's free, gratuitous grace. Where do I start? These people pray all the time. They go to mass every single day. They pray the rosary five times, you know, at least. Where do I start? You just start. Again, it's a, God already loves you. You start out with an A after you've been baptized, right? You, you've been saved by grace through faith, working us about in love. So what do I need? I need that faith to submit my intellect and will to the Lord. And I need to let my actions be an expression of love as I learn how to play the guitar. I'm going to fall down. I'm going to mess it up. But that's why God has given us reconciliation. That's why he's given us, he's given us forgiveness. It's because it's like, yeah, just because you've fallen doesn't mean it's over. Just because you failed doesn't mean my love's run out. So, my friends, God desires your heart. He desires your salvation. You're saved by grace. You didn't do anything to deserve it. So simply, work it out in fear and trembling. Faith, working itself out in love. Anyways, that's all i got for today. For all of us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.